Hey, I'm Christopher John Farley, a senior editor with The Wall Street Journal. Today, my guest is Kenneth Lonergan. He's the director of the new movie, Manchester by the Sea. Thanks a lot for coming to The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for having me. Okay, my understanding is that this idea was brought to you to do Manchester by the Sea, and then you took it, wrote the screenplay, and ran with it. Tell me, who brought you the idea, and uh, what hooked you onto it? Uh, John Krasinski and Casey, uh, excuse me, John Krasinski and Matt Damon brought me the idea, uh, and they, Matt was going to direct it, and John was going to be in it. And um, they, they just, they kind of pitched me the idea and asked if I wanted to write the screenplay, and then everybody's schedules changed, and here we are. I ended up directing the film, and, uh, and Casey ended up being in it. Now, what was the idea that hooked you? What was the idea they pitched you on? It was just the idea of a guy who's left his hometown because of a personal tragedy and uh, is forced to come back to take care of his nephew when his older brother passes away. And I just liked that idea. I just thought it was really compelling and strong and the idea of someone who's basically broken, still having a sense of duty and still trying to do this difficult thing and taking care of his nephew and making sure he's uh, well looked after. Um, I don't know what, why it struck me so forcibly, but it did. Now, one thing I found interesting is that there are some themes that I think sort of echo you know, one of your, your, your first breakthrough movie, You Can Count On Me. I mean, siblings, going back to your hometown, death. Well, why are these issues ones that in particular concern you as a screenwriter? Of course, there are issues that concern, concern human beings in general, but you as a screenwriter, why is that? That's really hard to say. I don't, you, you, you're interested in all sorts of things, and then you can only write about some of them, and I don't know why. Uh, I'm interested in what I'm interested in. Um, I think, you know, the idea of coping with death or the repercussions of death or the fallout of death or death anywhere or just generally big difficult things in your life is seems dramatic to me and something that I guess everybody's interested in and I suppose um, something I don't quite have a handle on maybe, I don't know. It's hard for me to, there are things that I just can't find a comfortable place to where the, there's no comfortable place where they sit inside my thinking and maybe those are the things you write about. I really don't know. Now, of course, Manchester by the Sea is getting a lot of award season buzz. People are talking about Casey Affleck's performance at the center of your movie. What scene in this film was the most difficult to film emotionally? Well, I think uh, I think that Casey was very concerned about the the big flashback scene and how he would react to the the tragedy. That I don't want to give it away. Yeah, but, uh, no, don't give I, that I, away. I won't. No spoilers. He was, he was very concerned about that, and I I was less concerned about it. And I think that he just had a, he had some concerns that I didn't share. But he's the one who has to play the part, and I just have to direct the movie, which is which are two different things. I think in a funny way, some of the smaller scenes were more difficult to find our way into because the character is so detached, well, he's, he's trying to be detached, he's trying to keep himself on the outside of everything if possible, and so it makes his interactions very odd. And I think just kind of tra tracking that was both the biggest challenge and the most fun that we had. Um, for me, directorially, it was definitely the most fun, just kind of working on where Casey's character's at and why he reacts to people the way he does and why he fails to react to people the way they expect him to. And um, I'd say that just following those beats was the most interesting part of the work and probably the most difficult. Now, I know Matt Damon was a producer on this product, but given how well the movie turned out, the kind of acclaim you're getting, has he called you to complain that maybe he should have started in the movie after all? <laughs> no, that's not really his style. He's a very generous and he's, he, he, you know, he's said that He's made jokes about it, but he's very, he loves Casey and he's very happy for Casey and he appreciates what a great actor Casey is. So he, I don't think he's, I don't, I don't think he's uh, got any regrets or if he has, he's kept them to himself. How might that have changed the movie had the casting been different? Had he been in the center of the movie? Would you have had a different vision of how to make it? Had, um, had uh, uh, Matt Damon been your star instead of Casey Affleck? Yeah, I mean, it's always different. Whenever you have a different actor, you have a different movie. I mean, that's one of the interesting things about directing is just seeing the tremendous impact each actor has on the on the project as a whole. Um, Matt is a great actor. It would have been a great, a totally different, great performance, I'm sure. Once you, once you cast the actor and once you've worked on the part with them and once the film is completed, it's impossible really to disassociate the actor from the character. But when you're 
on the other side of it and you're trying to think who could play this part, a number of people might come to mind and then the person who, who ends up in the role really gets locked in in your imagination. Now, of course, the movie you made before this, um, uh, Margaret, was caught up in some legal struggles. It took a while to release. And I've read that you weren't happy with even the final cut that got released because it wasn't edited the way that you wanted and was as long as you, you, you would have liked. How did that experience change you as a, as a filmmaker, as an artist? Well, it was an interesting experience because I did end up getting pretty much the version I wanted out on the DVD uh, version in 2012, which is called Margaret, the Extended Edition. And that is very close to what I had intended the film to be. Um, I don't know. It wasn't really an artistically... It wasn't an experience where I was challenged artistically. It was, a, it was an experience where there were a lot of problems uh, procedurally and... Uh, administratively and so it was more like a getting along with people kind of problem and not so much a, a uh, how do you make your movie better kind of problem so I'm not sure if there were any creative lessons at all really um, I think except I guess you know that movie and then this film also both have helped me to uh, I think separate the two things a little better just try to really keep the administrative problems off to one side and really try to focus on the creative problems uh, independently of that. And, you know, when you're directing, you have so many, even if everything's going well, you have so many people around, there's just this swirl of activity around you and you're, you're, you're the only one who's there from the very beginning to the very end, and uh, especially if you're the screenwriter as well. So, uh, you know, I have this image of directors like here and then everything else is just like all around them and you have to really try it's very difficult to just keep your focus and it's, it's you know it takes time to learn how to do that now what I found interesting and maybe I'm analyzing too much here but in the movie you've just made Manchester by the Sea there's a character who's kind of numbed by a tragedy that's happened to him and his um, and then something happens sort of brings him back into the world do you feel like this movie in the same way affected you? I mean, you'd been numb by this horrible experience with your last movie, and now you had this other project that was brought to you by, by Matt Damon that sort of brought you back into the, the creative community again and doing what you do best. I don't know. Those how, how do you like that analysis? <laughs> Those kind of personal <laughs> analogies are for others to make, not for me. <laughs> well, I say that also because I know that you have an analyst background. Your, your mother was an analyst. Your stepfather was an analyst. You were the screenwriter for... Analyze, uh, analyze this. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, it, it, is analysis, psych psychiatry, you know, Freudian theory, is that something that plays a part when you write a screenplay? Not, not as such. I mean, it's something that I think about. You know, I'm interested in personalities, and I'm interested in psychology, and I'm interested in how people behave and why they do the things they do. And uh, but it's not not a direct influence. I would think the movies would and my plays would be pretty dull if it, if it were. Mm. I've heard also you're a big fan of sci-fi. We were talking earlier about the, the great Foundation trilogy by Isaac Asimov. Would you ever um, direct a sci-fi film? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I just have to think of one that I liked enough to direct or someone would have to give me one that I liked enough to direct. I love science fiction and looking, always looking for the next really great science fiction movie to go see. Um, it's a big part of my growing up and uh, it's a big part of my, 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 uh, my world view, so to speak. Now, I've read that as a kid, you toyed around with writing some science fiction short stories and oh, books. Yeah. Is there anything there that you could develop into a film later on? I don't think so. Most of my science fiction writing was pretty derivative. Uh, but that's what I did from when I was in fifth grade till about 10th grade was all I did was write science fiction. And I wrote not just stories, but novels. I have like novels that I started when I was nine and didn't finish till I was 11. So the typing is like way, way better in the second half. In the, and uh, I did about three or four of those. And then I got interested in a, a more realistic genre and uh, got interested in the theater instead of uh, novels. But you never know. Of course, your first feature, You Can Count On Me, that wasn't, um, got Oscar nominations. This film here has got a lot of Oscar buzz, uh, Manchester by the Sea. How has the award show sort of game changed? I mean, what, what's it like to sort of be out there on the circuit, you know, being part of the whole award show discussions? Is there something about it that annoys you, that's hard to deal with? Uh, tell me a bit about what the process is like. Well, it's, you know, it's a little embarrassing to talk about yourself a lot. You know, I don't like that part of it so much, but you also want to support the film, and it's great to get the recognition, it's great to have people appreciating the movie, it's great for people to say that they like the movie and to say that, and I'm really thrilled for the cast and all the attention that they've gotten. 
and it's you know it's it's a way for to give the work a, a bigger audience and that's you know the whole point of the doing this kind of work is to communicate with people I think and to have them participate in in your work and and um, to see your work through their eyes and see how you could maybe make it better next time and just getting you know and having the support that goes into participating in these kinds of events from the distributor is really important Amazon's really supporting the film beautifully and that's something I haven't always had um, so it's it's you know and on the other hand you find yourself you know being filmed talking about yourself <laughs> which is a little strange now one thing I find interesting is that this award season there are a couple movies um, a Jackie which is about uh, Jackie Kennedy in the aftermath of JFK's assassination um, uh, arrival. Um, I won't give anything away, but it, it also deals with grief and a horrible tragedy. And your film, which has at its, at its heart this horrible tragedy that the Casey Affleck character is dealing with. What do you think makes grief, you know, tragedy, um, and dealing with it, and, and a, a, such an attraction to at least a couple filmmakers this time around? What about it attracted you? Since obviously grief isn't necessarily the most obvious subject for for, for cinema. I think that it's a, it's not so much grief itself; it's what people do in the face of it that I think pe that uh, that I find compelling, and I think these other films are addressing too. I mean, Jackie is about what she did after the assassination, not not how upset she was. It's what she did, and I think my movie is about what he does, what Casey's character does in the face of everything that's happened to him, and not just him, but all the other characters in the film. And I think that's something that that all of us have to cope with and deal with, and. It's very difficult. There's no real, you know, the only, the only approach that I find objectionable is when the film purports to have an answer for what you're supposed to do and what the right way to handle uh, distress and grief and suffering is and what the wrong way is. I don't like that so much because nobody has an answer. Um, or if they have, it may be a good answer for them, but it's not necessarily a good answer for you or me. So I think that, and also it's, it's not dramatic just to have a film about people suffering and being miserable and, sitting, you know, just just the impact of, 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 you know, of bad things, just the impact of grief and just, just feeling grief is not a story. What you're doing about it, good, bad, productive, unproductive, destructive, or positive, or whatever, just getting through it can be very interesting as, as anyone who's experienced it knows and everyone experiences it. So it's a pretty universal condition. Uh, and also I think it, often brings out the best in people uh, or it brings out something good in them. People really try to take care of each other when, they, when, when, when disaster strikes. And, um, you know, you often find your most memorable, your, your most uh, admirable memories. Of, well, let me put it another way. You often find that the things you admire most in people tend to come out when things, when things get really tough. Um, and how people handle things when things get tough is, often tells you a lot about them. So I think that's a quality I think all the films you mentioned have in common. Uh, how do people cope with what life throws at them? Okay, so you've got Manchester by the Sea generating all this award show talk. Um, what's, what's next for you? Are we going to have to wait years for you to come up with another project? or? Uh, well, it takes a while to, 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 uh, to work on them for me, but uh, I don't know. I have some plays I'd like to do. I have some films I'd like to do. I'm not sure which one's going to really catch on yet. Uh, you know, you start out with six ideas, you end up with two that, you, that, that come to completion. I'm sorry it's so slow, but what can I do? <laughs> well, Kenneth Lonergan, thanks a lot for coming to the Wall Street Journal. Thank Appreciate you. It.